So what am I doing on a lovely day like this? Look at the sun shining bright and it's five o'clock in the evening, 18th of March and it really feels like spring. But I'm right in the middle of our repotting season. Many of these maples as you can see are just coming into leaf and this is still uh, the right time to pot some of the maples. We usually begin with the deciduous trees first, in fact with the maples, and then we move on to the uh, evergreen trees. This is another day shoujo which is just coming to leaves. Not all of them need repotting, but I'm going to show you some repotting projects which customers bring to us. Just during the past week gone, within the space of six days, we've had about maybe nine customers and they all brought these big trees to us for repotting. And they bring them to us because they are afraid to uh, do it themselves. So I'm just going to show you this one uh, in case we miss the opportunity. It's too good an opportunity to miss. So if Jack can kindly remove the bag and you can see how pot bound it is. This is a typical pot bound tried maple. And tried maples have this very fleshy type of root. If you can just tilt it back a little bit, you can see it has gone round and round and round. So this is a typical pot-bound tree. It was grown in its Japanese training pot and I don't think he's done anything to it. So I'll ask Jack to start teasing some of it. The secret of repotting some of these quite nice or what I call major or semi-major trees is to know how much root to cut. That is the trick. If you cut too much, you can stress the tree. If you remove too little, then you may have wasted a lot of effort when you could have done a little more. So this was obviously in a very small pot. The Japanese are very fond of growing their trees in pot, small pots. So this must have come as an import. It's not my tree. He bought it from another nursery. But he brings it to me because he trusts me to do it. I asked him why didn't he take it back to the other nursery. He said it was either too far away. I don't know why he gave that excuse. But you can see how badly in need of reporting this tree is. It's almost like long hair. I bet if you stretched it, it would be like three foot long or more. But of course, trident maples have this habit. They are extremely vigorous trees. So they produce root like this. And of course, you can keep it pot bound. The leaves will get smaller. But if you keep it pot bound for too long, the tree will begin to go downhill and the tree will get progressively weaker and you will get branches dying. So from time to time, we need to repot. So look at that length of root. Look at all that root. Look at all that root. And there's some more. Okay, if I ask Jack to hold the camera for me, I'm going to give it a little tease myself. I love doing this. And... Uh, so the outer roots you will find are these soft fleshy roots. Let me explain to you. Now these roots, if you exposed it to frost, they will rot and they will die. If you look a bit deeper into the soil, you see these brown roots. These are more mature roots that have grown in previous years. Now these roots don't tend to rot so much. And of course you can tell it's live because if you scratch it, it's pure white underneath. So those Brown roots are the ones that have grown in the previous year and we will continue doing this. If you can kindly hold that end so it won't fall off. So it's knowing how far to go. So now let's cut this. This is the fun part, cutting this. All that can go. Now, I guess this tree was imported from Japan, not my tree. And the Japanese like to grow it in pure akadama, different grades, maybe fine grade. 
And akadama, as I said, can be used neat if you are in Japan. In this country, it's difficult to get away with it on a long-term basis. So I also take the opportunity to find good nebari. So we will also scratch the surface. Okay, let's twist it around so I can get to this side. So there's a mixture of the brown root and the white root. And for some reason, the roots always go to the perimeter of the pot. That means the edges of the pot. They don't always remain in the center. I don't know why that is, but because I think it's trying to stretch out as far as it can. Because in nature, the trees spread out their roots so that it makes the tree stable. So that is in the nature of the tree. Okay, rotate it a little more for me. So even a tree like this requires certainly two persons to do it. So big trees, if you're on your own and you're not very strong or not very agile, it can be a bit of a problem. Okay, a little more. Let's get it off that pot because I can't reach the surface. Put it on this side. I just want to scratch the surface now. This is where we are trying to find some surface roots to get good nebari. Good nebari means good surface roots. Those of you who watch my videos will know that I don't like using Japanese terms because Japanese terms are words that Japanese use, but bonsai is not just Japanese, it's universal. It's more Chinese than Japanese. But okay, if you understand what nebari is, then well and good, but nebari simply means the surface root. Can I turn that more upright? I haven't come across any surface roots yet. Usually when these trines are grown in the ground, they have some very thick fat roots and then they chop it hard back and then force it to produce fine roots. I still haven't come across thick roots yet. So you see I've already found an additional or extra one inch of trunk. And that would be the basis of a good root spread, spreading outwards. See, most people, when they get trees like that, they don't realize how important it is to get at the base to find the nebari. Now you can see the surface roots. See, this is where the surface roots begin, like that. Okay, this way. if this guy were to do his own repotting, it would never occur to him to go as low as this. I will just show you by taking it low how much more beautiful trunk we have found and more importantly root spread flaring into the side. See already we've got that much otherwise it was just like that. Okay more this way. So the repotting time is the best time to improve roots. I think in some of those earlier videos I tried to demonstrate that. And a little more this way. This is a heavy duty hook. Those multi-pronged tin stainless steel ones are okay for smaller trees, but when you're dealing with big trees you need a more serious root hook. A 
Now you can see how the roots are spreading into the soil. Okay, more this way. So you can see how we've got that flare going out that way. You see, so I've improved the nebari no end. As I say, if this gentleman were to have done it himself, it would never occur to him to find a nebari like that. It's beautiful. See how the roots are going in? Like that and like that, spreading outwards. These small things we can get rid of. We got enough root underneath. Okay, that is enough. Now let's find the pot. Preparing the pot, he's decided to get this beautiful Yixing pot. Yixing is an area in China near Shanghai. Yixing produces the best ceramics in China. They produce these beautiful red clay teapots, which are very, very famous. And all these good pots nowadays have these tying holes. So this pot, apart from the drainage hole, have these small tying holes, which are for wire. So I usually prefer to tie the wire like that, crisscross. And I'm using here two and a half mil wire because this is a big tree, serious tree. Okay, now putting the mesh and I will put a little bit of uh, huga in it. I can stabilize the Huga is that drainage layer. Is there any sugar here? You know that yellow bag. Right? Now, Huga is not Akadama and it's not Kanuma. It's a very dense, almost like a type of pumice. And the Japanese use that really as a drainage here. And in particular, I benefit from that. So this is Huga, so put it out of the base. I just put a tiny layer, and that is sufficient. There, yeah, that's plenty. Okay. And then, I will, I want to cut this wire off in case I need more. And this is our magic mix, which is, I would say, 50% Akadama, and there is Japanese volcanic grit, pumice, pine bark, and a bit of that maybe Levington type peat or cocoa fiber soil. But the bulk of it, 50% is Akadama. So that's the mixture I use for most of our trees. And Tridents love this. And when I put the soil, I always put a little mound, little mountain so that I can squash the tree. So if you bring that tree now. So the front is over here. It's like a little twin trunk. You see there's a twin trunk this side, and because the tree is slightly that side, let me just see, positioned in the pot is quite important. So you look at that beautiful flare there. Okay, so if you can, just the wire underneath. Okay. Then twist it tight, and then I can connect it up on this side. Oh, it's this one. Tighten it. And then the rest is just putting the soil in. And that's it. So that little round training pot was not quite the right pot. It was only a training pot. So this, I think, to my mind, is better proportion for the tree. So remember my rule of thumb, or most people's rule of thumb, is that the length of the pot is about, in this case, 60% of the height of the tree. I think up to 70% is even OK. And I always say that we tend to use bigger pots than what, what Japanese growers would use. Japanese growers, especially in exhibitions, 
They like using very small pots. Again, everything is relative. Everything is relative. But for the health of the tree, I always reckon that a larger pot is more comfortable for the tree. Even Chinese growers, those of you who are more observant, if you look at the pictures of Chinese bonsai or penjing or punking, they use bigger pots than the Japanese would. These are just observations of mine. For big trees, I don't bother with the chopstick. I saw on someone else's channel, I don't often watch other people's channel, he was using a chopstick and after that he was using a metal hammer to tap, tap the pot. I'm surprised the pot didn't even break. But uh, I don't think it's necessary to do that. But again, I don't always say that this is right or this is wrong, but it is dangerous to tap the pot with a metal hammer. If you can kindly, strong man, put it on there. Can you lift it? Right? This, this little device of mine, I always like because it is absolutely horizontal, so I can get a good view of the tree. I'm leaving these because I'm going to tie it out. So you can see the nebari better. How, see, I've teased that much of soil. The tree was growing at that level, but I've scraped it away. Can you see how the roots are spreading in there? So that is how I have produced nebari. Now, there is some excess wire here. The reason why I leave it is because I like to bring it round and then tie that up. If can, David can kindly do that for me. You can remove this wire or make sure it doesn't bite the trunk after about six months or nine months. But this stabilizes the tree. The reason why we tie it so that when it is getting established in the pot, it doesn't get knocked out accidentally. And then all we do is fine. There's no need to do it that tight. So you can see the lovely nebari. And this tree's got a beautiful movement there. And if he simply keeps it clipped, you get a lot of ramification. I could see the branch growing a little longer there, but this is a lovely tree with a lot of these gnarled features. Uh, some people may think it's a fault, but I like it because it looks absolutely natural. There you go, so we've done that one. So I hope you've enjoyed these repotting exercises. This is what we call fairly serious repotting. So there you go. So here we are in the third week of March and customers keep bringing more and more trees in for repotting. This is an old privet which this customer has brought in and it's grown quite well. It's styled quite nicely and you can see that massive trunk and it was in a cascade pot which was not really suitable and you can see the roots that have come out. They've used some grains of big akadama so this is good soil, the tree is growing well. So that was the original pot from which it came out. And this is the proposed new pot that we're gonna put it in because the customer wanted a glazed pot. I will now show you the other tree which he has also brought in. It's a mighty great big, I think either an English elm or Siberian elm. The trunk is massive and we're going to pot it in I think a rectangular pot, so we will see how we get on, and I'm going to improve it. The customer has kept it quite well. All he's done is trim the ends, so there's a lot of canopy, a lot of ramification. So let's see how we get on with these two trees. I'm just going to show you a little trick. Where you get a very congested root ball like this, it doesn't hurt to cut it with a saw, not like slicing a cake, but because the roots are going round and round, if we just make a cut like this, then we don't have to disentangle the root that much. There are all sorts of ways you can improvise for repotting, as long as it works. We're just getting rid of roots. So whichever way you do it, as long as the roots are cut, that is okay. 
I'm using one of my old saws. I always emphasize that I never use new saws because it blunts it, but these are blunted saws anyway, so they're very handy. I dare say that the roots are really thick in there. Sometimes you might even need to use an axe or use a big lopper. It's really all about penetrating the root hole. See, that root ball is hard to get if you keep doing that, but if you just make a cut there, it makes it so much easier to get into that root ball. Many of these roots have just gone round and round and round. See, that makes it easier to penetrate. Really, it's a very nice tree. I don't like that root. I might even consider burying it or taking it off. It doesn't add to the design of the tree. So these Thickish roots are ideal for propagating. point you can even use a lopper. Let's see if the loppers help at all. So it's really about letting air into the system. When it gets congested like this, air can never penetrate. So all those lumps of root we can try and get out. And let me just try the axe. So it might seem brutal, but sometimes that is the only way you can do it. It's not often that we get a situation like this. No need to be namby-pamby about it. So tight. Use the big loppers as well. So you get the general idea. These roots have just been going around year after year.
I have long loppers. Have you seen my big loppers? Oh, here it is. Elm roots are almost like fabric. The fibers are very hard to get a clean cut. So, always troublesome dealing with them. You see, they don't cut clean. Once you worked with it, you will just bring the stuff. See, look at all that. So I won't, as I say, bore you, but you get the general drift. All those roots we don't need. If you leave it too long, this tree will rise out of the pot as well. So this is the sort of thing we're trying to get out. So we just have to work away and get all this out. Stop it. So this is the elm in its new pot and it looks quite different. Beautiful ramification. I don't know whether to take that root off but I think it would have been a bit drastic. I think that root needs to be there and this is a tree funnily enough is nice from either side. Even this side looks nice. Very natural looking tree. Obviously just developed from a stump, but it just shows what you can make from a stump. So that's another job done. 